Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at Persimian Tapu Koko. It's an archetype that I actually played at Elite Cup today and uh, got a top 8 finish, nothing too special. Um, but I actually played a couple cards different from this list and obviously since today's experience I've made a few more changes to the deck and I feel like it's one worth trying to graft at the moment because there's still some big benefits to playing Persimian right now. Obviously fighting typing is something I've been exploring in the last few videos I've been going for, looking for answers to Picarom and answers to Zoroark, because these are two big things to tick off your list. And having the Tapu Koko support, being able to fly and flip things, uh, is pretty good against Malamar decks, and it's pretty good against Zapdos. So having, you know, a slightly favourable Zoroark and Picarom, and a 50-50-ish Malamar and Zapdos, I want to say, um, leads to a reasonable deck in the meta, I think, right now. Uh, because that covers a lot of your matchups, to be honest. And being a non-GX deck that has Shrine uh, can just be annoying for a bunch of other things. So we know against, like, the Cephalons, for example, you can do some early flying flipping and move into team play, just like how we used to see it function. And, you know, Persimian was one of those decks towards the end of the Lost Thunder format pre-team up that was doing pretty well. It got a top eight in Harrogate, and um, it was definitely an archetype that was not seeing a lot of play, but was seeing some reasonable cut rates. So... It's actually a deck that's still a little under the radar, and uh, I'm hoping that this deck can uh, prove its worth here. Uh, there was a build in Cans, uh, led by Fabian Puyol, that was uh, using Lightning Energies, uh, as well as the Tapu Koko Prism Star, um, and having a couple of Zapdos in there. Today we're sticking with the same uh, Counter Energy base build, trying to fly and flip around stuff, but it is also on my radar to test out the Lightning Energy base build. The biggest downside of the Lightning build is you can't play Magical Swap, so in those matchups where you need to spread, it's slightly weaker. Um, but, so, I mean, that's the reason why I went with this build today. And I will be exploring the Zapdos Lightning build as well at some point. But for now, this is going to be the build that I uh, profile and take a look at. So, first of all, let's look at for Simeon. It's one of our two main attackers with uh, two attacks available. Uh, Fling for a fighting, does 30 to one of your opponent's bench. You can use this in a pinch because we are playing counter energy. So if you can do some stalling shenanigans and you can start flinging the bench for some free prizes, or at least set up prizes, that's the idea. But the main reason Persimian's in here is his fighting type coverage alongside this team play attack. For two colorless energy, you do 10 plus 30 more for each of your bench Persimian. So the idea is with three Persimian on your bench, you do a base of 100. And if you have a shrine pushing you to 210 against Zoroark, if you have choice band, you're knocking out Picarom. So... Um, yeah, that's the idea. We're going to use this with damage modifiers to take one-hit knockouts on fighting weak, weak stuff. And that's two big decks in the format. That's the idea behind Persimian. You also have two copies of the Power Huddle Persimian in the list. Uh, as long as this is on your bench, Persimian's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's evolved Pokemon. Uh, so we are able to reach that much more. Each of these Persimians essentially count as 60 damage uh, when you are hitting into evolved stuff as well. So... Maybe with some Shrine Ticks here and there, you can even hit some um, non-fighting weak evolved Pokemon uh, really, really easily. I was actually able to knock out a Jolteon today with just one of this guy on the board. Uh, because you can just choice band and have one of this on the board and have one team play. So against some Zapdos Jolteon based decks, if they're going to try and go Jolteon for ease of knocking out Cocos, uh, you can actually spring this little mini Persimian line into the list and take one hit KO. So this power huddle, definitely a very, very useful attack. Rock Hurl is again, um, something you can go for if you really have to, because counter energy is in the list. So do bear that in mind as well. It's something you can keep an eye on. The second part of the deck is gonna be Tapu Koko. Flying Flip does 20 to each of your opponent's uh, Pokemon. So the whole idea is when we aren't against the fighting weak stuff, we're gonna be doing spread damage as much as possible. We have Shrine in here, we have Electro Powers and we have Choice Bands. So these spreads are not just 20 to everything. Sometimes we can ramp that up even more. It's going to be a pain for Malamar players. It's going to be a pain for Zapdos players, of course, because we do hit those for weakness as well. So we're trying to capitalize on low hit points, Jirachis, and the fact that we can Electro Power to boost our damage against Zapdos to give them very annoying pressure. Uh, it's actually really good to hit these guys, these Zapdos, for 100 rather than actually just taking a physical knockout because you trap them in the active, or at least try to trap them in the active. Uh, as well as the Absol that we play on the list. And that means that sometimes you can buy yourself extra turns for future flying flips. So that's pretty much the idea here. Uh, although we're not taking, you know, one for one prize trade on a Zapdos, we're trying to 
flip as much as possible and you know sk uh, jump over some extra prizes whilst you're setting up these Zapdos really easily you're also catching the Jirachis that are on their board um, as much as possible that's the whole intent behind this deck list so that's pretty much the sort of two card combo that we're trying to work in here from there, we're going to have uh, a lot of cards to help us draw. We're going to have two copies of Stellar Wish Jirachi. I paid three today, and the card is pretty nice, but it is more supplementary in this build. Uh, we can't commit too many deck spaces on the board, or sorry, bench spaces on the board, when we have to go Persimian route. And I think it's better to have Zebras on your board than Jirachis overall, especially against Zoroark, which is a fight which is going to be playing Muck. Uh, so this becomes like a dead space, whereas the Zeb Striker will be much more impactful. So... I feel like Jirachi is only really necessary as a two count. We can get good value from it because we can still skateboard him in the matchups where we don't get mucked and we can get some free, you know, searches for Electro Powers, Ball Search cards, um, stretchers. These are all things that we need to look for quite a bit as well as just extra supporter cards. So it does get immense value, but we don't need to have the full four package in here because we already have three Tapu Kokos, which are reasonable leads. So when we're going first, we can already free retreat to this guy pretty easily. We have two switch, we have two escape probe, it works, oh, sorry, escape board. It works on all of our basics because they all have one retreat cost only. So we can get into a Jirachi if we need to just for extra Stellar Wish procs throughout the game, but it's not the full intent of the engine. So just two copies there. And then we have the 2 2 Zeb Striker line. I really like playing this today. Uh, being able to sprint, just get rid of your hand and draw four more uh, is really nice to help dig for energy cards. That's the biggest thing that we can't find with the Jirachi. It's those special energy cards that this deck is very, very reliant on. In a lot of games, actually, today, I was trying to get double Zebra on board just for when we push into the late game, especially if you start pulling ahead on prizes where the counter energies shut themselves off. You need to dig hard for those DCEs. So having Zebra in here as the supplementary draw engine is really nice. And obviously, it doesn't get shot off by Muck as well, which, you know, Blacephalon and Zoroark are playing at the very least. And a few other decks are trying to add it in when they can as well, just for the amount of Jirachi decks in the format. So having some more stability against that is going to be really important. So when we have three stretcher, 4-4 four, four ball search, and 2-2 two, two zebra, we have good odds of finding this relatively early as long as we can uh, prioritize it. And when really, especially when we're like spreading in early turns, we don't need to commit much ball search to anything else. We get like two cocos down and then we can just go, okay, time to grab Blitzel and uh, set, set up that zeb striker in the back to give us a bit of a safety net to help us keep grabbing energy cards, which is pretty much what the deck needs to do in order to chain attacks because we're just non-GXs, so they go down fairly often. So replenishing that energy, it's going to be really important. From there, uh, two one-offs. I've already mentioned the Absol, Dark Ambition. It's going to be very annoying for Zapdos players because the idea is, as I've already mentioned, you don't knock out a Zapdos clean. You sort of spread around and leave it in the active, force them to find Guzma plus switch card um, or, you know, a skateboard and pay retreat on their own Jirachi and stuff like that. So going to make life awkward for them make them pay for retreating in and out all the time and uh try and trap their zapdos whenever you can sometimes you buy free turns and it's going to be amazing for you because you can capitalize on that and now that we play four electro power this flying flip just gets pretty easy i actually played two electro power today it ended up punishing me against uh, one of the malamars i played in top eight uh and it wasn't super comfortable the zapdos matchup so i've increased the electro power count um just to make those a little bit more reasonable in our favor so the absol definitely helps out though especially early game and it's really annoying when uh malamar players also play the jirachi and they start skateboarding in case early and stuff sometimes you can buy yourself an extra turn which is an extra like 60 or 80 damage if you're doing flying flips early on which is just really good for you the final card is that uh, psychic tapulele i think psychic typing is more relevant than fairy typing right now uh, obviously Ultra Necrozma is big in the format, but there's also regular Necrozma and there's also Lucario, which is around. So I think Psychic Typing slightly pips the um, Fairy Typing Lele right now. Magical Swap is, however, the main attack. Um, Side Wave obviously being an option, but Magical Swap is what we look for late game, especially when we've gone down this spread route of all this flying flipping around the board using trying to tick things over. Um, we're going to try and swap to find our end game. That's pretty much the goal here, so... That's really what we're looking at here to close out games when we do go down the spread route. Onto the item cards. Uh, two copies of Switch. I actually played two Switch and a Rope today. Rope was like the deadest card for me because against Zapdos players, you don't want to Rope because you give them a free pivot for their own Zapdos all the time. And uh, against everything else, it was pretty useless. So <laughs> I've just uh, thinned the Jirachi. I was at three and then one Rope. Uh, but now I've just gone to two, two Switch and two Rope. So it's like a mini package in there. 
Obviously, Coco has free retreat, so we don't need too many switching cards overall. But I think this combination is all we really need. From there, three copies of Rescue Stretcher. I'm teetering between three and four. Wanted to make space for those Electro Powers, but this is obviously very useful for recycling. You know, we only have two copies of this attacking Persimian. These ones we can't, uh, the other ones we can't really attack with. So making sure that we have a constant supply of these in those matchups where he's important is obviously a big deal. Replenishing Zeb Striker if it's going to get targeted. Replenishing Coco when we need to spread with it. These are all things we need to bear in mind. Zapdos players love trying to pick up Absol and knock that out as well. Recycling that is also a pretty good deal. So I could see you trying to get fourth stretcher in here, to be honest. I do think it's valuable right now. We're just at three copies. Four ofs of the ball search cards. We just want to get these out into play. And we can also thin our hand to improve our lilies. Uh, thin, you know, cards that we don't need in match up. For example, when we're going heavy Persimian, we can dump excess Cocos. And we probably don't need the Absol either or this guy. And when we're going spread route, we don't need too many Persimian. Uh, maybe keeping an option for them late game. Uh, just if we need to like push our last couple of prizes once we've like depleted their board with spread. Uh, this guy can be useful, but overall we don't go heavy on the Persimian approach if we start off flying flipping. So we can start just dumping them. And, uh, you know, with, ultra, with four Ultra Wall Sprint, uh, we have a good amount of like cards that we can just thin from the deck, which is pretty important. Uh, four copies of Electro Power. I didn't play that many today, and it did feel like it punished me. Giving us this extra burst is a big deal. And uh, it still has that synergy with Jirachi, like you've seen in Zapdos. You can just pick those out and just get more damage on the board with Flying Flip. Even if you're not pushing for knockouts, it's just going to give you more overall damage to swap around the place, which is a really big deal. And against stuff like Giratina especially, you can punish them, putting damage on themselves a lot more to really force the Malamar player to have more cards every turn. And that's kind of what I suffered from today. Um, so having more ramp is going to be a big deal in my opinion. On to the uh, stadium counts. I definitely like winning the stadium war, so I am playing two shrine and a brooklet. You could just play three Shrine. I wouldn't ever dislike that because obviously this damage is going to really help, especially when you're spreading around. Um, and it also just puts like Lele's into range sometimes or uh, Zoroark's into range with less like requirement for more Persimian and stuff. So I definitely like a couple of copies, but I also like the one Brooklet, I think a little bit more than the third Shrine, just for that brick factor, trying to eliminate that. When you are up against the Picaroms, when you are up against Zoroark, all you really want is to see as many monkeys early as you can. So you can get that team play ramping quickly. So I think the one Brooklet Hill is better than just a third shrine, but that's up for debate. Uh, it's what I played today, and I thought it was pretty reasonable, especially when, like, it's only a one-off, but we have Stellar Wish to try and pick it out at the right times as well. So it just feels like a reasonable one-off over a third shrine. But if you just want to win that stadium war, and if you feel like there are a lot of GXs in your meta, you could just go for three shrine if you really want to. From there, we're going to play uh, one copy of Gladian. I think this is very important when we... Uh, can be prizing our monkeys because that's a big problem not only will we find it difficult to chain attacks with team play if one's prized but also the team play itself gets a lot weaker also dc is a critical card that we need to keep track of for the entire game and the gladian can also pick that out as well so that's a pretty big deal uh three copies of guzma um i kind of would like four or if i was going to play something else something like a counter catcher could also be introduced into the deck just for more stalling aspect once again, uh, we love hitting into Zapdos because we hit them for weakness. Against Malamar, we can try and buy ourselves excess turns by just having more gust on Malamars whenever possible. Obviously, Ultra can play between like two and three switch as well as escape boards, which they can still put onto their Malamars and they can pay retreat and stuff. But um, I think Guzma forcing them to have those answers is something that we can bear in mind, especially if they're trying to limit their own bench size uh, because of flying flips. So definitely something to keep in mind. We can use this defensively. Um, when we're cocoing or offensively when we're trying to knock out as many Zoroark as we can see, basically. Uh, four Cynthia and four Lily will round out the supporter line. Then we have the two boards, which can go on anything, but also works on Jirachi best. Uh, obviously, we can put it on Zeb Striker if we face opposing Absols, something to bear in mind, or we can even put them on the Coco if we have to. And uh, the three choice band, I think it's a big deal. Uh, we want to be able to push against Zoroark, uh, and we like pushing as well with flying flips at times, and nothing too painful um in terms of just being able to sprint these and ultra ball these away um that's not really a big deal there's no other tools that we're too concerned about putting on our attacking pokemon at the very least so i like three copies again just pushing against zoroark is such a big deal you just hate whiffing <laughs> against zoro because they'll keep you honest they'll take a prize a turn otherwise and as long as we can get monkeys down early find our dcs at a relative pace these choice bands will help us get over the line Finally, we just play the four double colorless. Obviously works on our two main attackers. 
and for counter energy this lets us magical swap it lets us uh, use electro ball in random spots it lets us head bolt in random spots as well this can knock out uh, more zapdos if you need to and uh, lets us team play fling rock curl and it even does let us use shadow seeker which is Again, an attack that I found out is reasonable against Malamar. I've talked about Malamar a lot, uh, just because of my experiences today. Um, but this can obviously knock out Giratinas, so bear that in mind, uh, because not much in the deck can. So <laughs> that's something you need to keep an eye on. I actually attached Counter Energy to Absol a lot today. I even did it against Picarom, so that can be stuff that happens, apparently. So Counter Energy, very versatile and strong. Overall, there are some other cards that I would like consider playing. Again, more switching cards is something that's kind of on my mind. Um, also, that Stadium Count with Shrine could be adjusted if you want to. Um, also, there's other counter energy Pokemon you could think about, like the Grass Shaman to give you, again, like better answers against Zora Rock because they're probably attacking with the Rock part of the deck because they don't want to be attacking with Zora if they can help it. You can just come in and do a rally back and take a surprise knockout on them. And that's going to put you really far ahead. Uh, you know, bearing in mind that they go ahead of you in prizes, you get that big two for one swing back in your favor. And of course, it's using a counter energy rather than a DCE, which is pretty valuable for you as well. Uh, so that's something you could consider. I think energy lotto was the only other thing that I was really thinking about this morning in my list. Uh, uh, definitely something that I was considering going into my list why have i just written the word energy energy lotto uh, i was thinking of just having a couple copies in here sprinting is the main way we try and like dig hard to find our energies but this is a nice card we can pull out with the uh, jirachi i think if we were thicker on the jirachi line going up to like third jirachi third switch uh, you can consider adding in a couple of lottos so that's really up to you i can feel like if you want to drop the brooklet for the extra jirachi find space for another switch uh, maybe drop like one electro power to add in one lotto Feels a little bit random, but at the same time, it could bail you out in random spots. So, something to bear in mind. Let's change, uh, save these changes because I think I've just added the electro powers, and uh, we'll jump into the ladder because I think Coco Simeon. The reason I played it today was because uh, I love Zoroark and Zapdos. They're my two favorite decks in the format right now, but their mirror matches suck. Uh, there's not much skill to those mirrors at all. Uh, which sort of led me here. I was like, well, this has a reasonable matchup spread and I'm not going to face mirror matches. So that was the intention and uh, it worked out reasonably okay today, but I'm definitely going to give more time to this deck because I feel like it's one worth testing. There's definitely something here. It's just getting that balance right between consistency and damage output overall. I think today my balance was a little bit off, a little bit too concerned about bricking and uh, didn't have enough electro powers to get me over the line. Good news about Electro Power is when you're in those matchups where Persimian is more important, you can just toss them away if you need to as well. They're never going to clunk out the deck too much. That's the intention. And straight away, we do uh, spy a Zoroark deck, which is good for us. They get to go first. We do already have a double Colors Energy in hand. Uh, so that's good. Our opponent kicks things off with a couple Nest Ball. Always pretty strong. They're going to grab Grimer out the gate as well. You can see an attachment and a Cynthia. Interesting that he sees Persimian and immediately goes for Grimer rather than more Zeruas for his own setup. Not even a Ditto. Third Nest Ball. Good start from our opponent. Now I imagine we'll see a Zerua. They still need to draw cards at the end of the day. I think the Zoroark players have to be brave. And yeah, I'm so surprised he got the Grimer before the Ditto. Makes no sense. Anyway. <laughs> We're not going to harp on that too much. Getting rid of Shrine is annoying. Getting rid of Cynthia is also annoying. Uh, I think Shrine can go. I believe that we have enough choice band to get us over the line. Let's have a look what's going on here. <laughs> so we prized one Blitzel. We have both our Jirachis. All of our Psimian are in deck. Thumbs up. That didn't happen much for me today, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, we have our other Shrine and we have all three choice bands. So that's looking chill. We have all of our energy in deck as well. All of our Guzmas are in deck. Okay. Glad you can get the rest. We've prized a Stretcher. Something to bear in mind. So we just need one Persimian in order to guarantee knockouts, but we have so many outs to Persimian and we only have one Blitzel. 
And I'm more concerned about bricking. So we're going to grab this boy. We're going to attach to the active and we're just going to lily. Sometimes you can try and play this match up just by taking uh, one prize at a time. Wow, we actually whiffed. Um, that sucks. Let's skateboard out of here. All right. Yeah. Um, let's do that. Okay. Um, it's actually not a big deal. I was literally just about to say that in many situations, uh, when you're playing this deck, you can just take, you can just attack three times and win, um, against the Zoroark players because obviously they're GXs. Um, so it's not huge that we miss a team play there. Obviously I would have preferred it, but, um, I think for the longevity of the game, I like this Blitzel being on board. Our opponent still has a lot to do if he wants to take a knockout of something that's not Zoroark here. Looks like they do have Guzma though. All without the need for trade. That's just good, isn't it? That last card's a Lily. We know that much. Or it's a Cynthia. Oh, it's not. Okay. He's not a complete high roller. <laughs> I won't get too tilted just yet. Oh, good draw for, uh, from us. Let's attach the counter and Cynthia here. This is why we play so many ball search cards. Hit this guy for 160. I don't think it's worth pushing the zebra button here because we have a Cynthia in hand anyway. And a DC. Let's go for the team play. We're hoping there's no Acerola in that three card hand of his. If there is, he has to attack us with a Zoroark anyway, which can have its benefits for us. Well, there's a Zoroark. Gonna see a trade. Wonder Tag. If he has to Lele for Acerola, it's not too big of a deal because there's a Lele on the board and we don't mind that too much. We'll put up with it. So just the beats, fortunately for us, no Alolan Muck. So we get the full benefit of these Power Huddle Persimians. Each of them count for 60. So we're already getting the knockout. I'm gonna fail this ball. And we're just gonna Cynthia for the fresh hand. Choice band not required. Team play. So his hand is Lycanroc Fighting Energy. And two cards we are unaware of. He goes straight into Riolu. Is he a Kukui? Oh my god. This, oh, with, this is fine. <laughs> uh, what a meme. We're 
this year then. Oh wow, he's going for muck. Wait. Tell me his last card in hand is also Vicario. Okay, he's prized a, a dude. That's good for us. Let's grab our stretcher. It's this important to recycle Persimians. Just team play. <clears throat> we get back our Gladian. Okay. Our opponent has gone fairly all in with their plays. Their eligible could have been for a Zoroark and they could have kept trading for cards. We'll see what their Kikui left them with. Stretcher for Zoro, I guess. Can't be for the Lele because of this guy. His ditto is also shut off, so he's uh, left with one trade. Instead, he's going to shuffle them back in, so it tells me he cocooed into a draw supporter, which is about right, I guess. They're going to attach to Rockcraft and calm. Jeez, what a game. We're also going to grab a Lycan. Try and protect their attachment, I guess. Maybe slow us down. That's the intention, at least. And just a pass. We actually pick up Guzma. Ten sizes three. A lot of fighting energy gone as well. Three fighting energy is gone. I think he's just Guzma this. And we'll team play. Sub Strike is a nice pickup. Other two prizes are Blitzel and Absol, so this is definitely the most relevant. Viridian can grab him that energy. I'm gonna see the Claw Slash come in. So we can't knock out this Lycan Rock, so I feel like we're choice banning the Coco here. This can go there. I think Brooklet's better than having the Viridian in play. I'm gonna put one of these on. Oops. Uh, I think I want a Cynthia pre-sprint. Uh, these cards aren't the worst to Cynthia back into. Gives us a 10 card dig for energy cards. Don't even need to sprint here. Not when we have counter energy in hand. We'll just swing for 80, which is good pressure from the Coco for sure. Again, he has no trades online, so we shouldn't expect them to have the other Acerola. Nor should we really be threatened by it. So if he ace a he's just smacking with a Lele. They're going to Brooklet out a Riolu. <clears throat> Bench a Lele. Just for a lily? Wow, just, okay. Just going ahead and benching it. Hmm.
<clears throat> we'll do this stuff. I think we still want to grab this guy just as a backup clause. Uh, I guess I grab the cocoa first. Yeah. No harm in that. And we're digging for stretcher band here. There's band. Does get pretty punished by. Let's play this quickly. Yeah, we only have one. We don't dig for this because it's our last energies that we drew into. Unfortunately, not the ideal sprint. Which means we take this. And we're just going to swing. So now if he has Acerola, he needs the Lucario, which he may have taken from prizes, because earlier he searched and failed to find it. So if they have the Acerola, that would be pretty painful for us. He again has those Orox though, so we can imagine he's pretty janky right now. That's the intention. That's the hope. They have a Lily for three. Not an Acerola, so that should be guaranteed game. They do get to evolve. Do they have any energies left anyway? Just an attack. We can flying flip our way to victory. It is brave trying to play this deck without Zoroarks, but it's also brave putting Zoroarks into play against this deck. It's kind of hope to high roll without trading <laughs> as they attempted, or it's try to get the Zoroarks and hope that I can't find Guzmas. And in both situations, it feels awkward. They did well early though. Had some pretty nuts hands without being able to trade at all. <laughs> pretty nuts, I'll be honest. The fact that he prioritized the muck as well. Crazy. Crazy. Let's have another game. We'll see. What's next on the list? It's always nice when you do start your Jirachi. Seeing a Rangaroo. This is going to be a Zapdos deck. Oh, it's going to be Gramble. It's the only thing I know that plays Apricorn Maker. Gramble can be an interesting one. They have to fill their board a lot, so we can do a lot of Spreaderunio. They really can't afford to not. Not fill their board. It's really hard for them to chain knockouts. We're going to see them continue their turn with an Ultra Ball here, getting rid of a Great Ball. So they probably have a pretty specific uh, and powerful hand for next turn, I would imagine. Either that or they have other Insta players that they can hope to instruct off of. Yeah, they're just going to hold the hand. Drawing Lily is pretty insane. Uh, let's start with this. I think we go spread based here. Especially when they started a Rangaroo. It's not easy for them to attack us turn two. Have all of our electro powers. Two, uh, sorry, one stretcher prized. One counter energy prized. Our fairy lele, oh, sorry, our psychic lele is also prized. We do have gladian though. Uh, all of our 
Oh, Simeon are here. Okay. So we know choice bands are dead. Guzma feels reasonable, but I don't think we need it. This turn, I'd much rather protect the Electro Powers. We have Omega High Roll potential of uh, trying to... That's not super likely they can do it, but... Yeah, I'm going to grab this. Um, Omega High Roll of potential of hitting a Switch card plus a DCE, but I'm not going to waste Electro Powers trying to hunt that down. This is... Not useful for us, but it could also deny them an insta play. Let's play this. This ball seems fine. Let's do this. One of these. We know that counter energy is one of our prizes, so we can guarantee an energy with Gladian next turn if he is able to knock out our active. And we're just going to keep snoozing send it their way see if they can get a knockout with all out this turn they have to get gramble energy switch card we see double gramble we see field blower sure maybe we have helped them in the end <laughs> well we tried to we tried to get them they could have played their own shrine and field blower like the other way around though so it doesn't really... Like, us playing Shrine didn't give them anything. They're going to Ultra Ball. And they're just going to grab my cargo. And what do they smooth over? Do they just smooth over another Orangaru? Or do they just go for one of the pieces and hope they draw into two Insta playables? That's the question. Answers on a postcard what you would do here. I think I would just go second Oranguru here and get set up. But that's just me. Or another Slugma even. Even another Slugma is good. Let's see what they believe is the play. Oh, have they already instructed? That's my bad. Yeah, they instructed into the Ultra Ball. What am I talking about? Okay. So... Let's then I wish to hope for a switch card because then we can oh no because the gladian's not getting us the right energy okay so we're gonna evolve we're just gonna play Cynthia here look at a fresh six to try and find an energy card well that's pretty much the nuts Uh, sure. This for next turn sounds good. This is happening, this is happening. I'm trying to think if it's better to electro power into this guy or electro power into like a mag cargo down the line. I think it's fine just emptying the barrel now. Because overall, we're looking to magical swap anyway, this game. And just getting damage on the Orangaru early is a threat to him and his own board state. It's two flying flips away. Potentially, we could have just played one and then one next turn, like, and try and tick everything over at the same time. Maybe that was best. Okay, they put Ditto to the top. That makes sense. Now we can see smooth over. They still need to find like a good combo of cards though. They need to find switch and energy and a card that they can insta play. Which is not easy. We obviously try and starve our opponent of Gladian as much as possible as well in this matchup. Not Gladian. Diantha. Gladian's on my head just because of the, the energy that we've got in there. Let's see if our opponent's able to move this monkey and get an attachment on top. Maybe Viridian Forest is the best thing they could put on top of their deck. It can guarantee that the other card's an insta play. Looks like they used Switch though. Let's see if they hit energy as well. No, they just switched. Okay. 
Okay, let's... The hand's reasonable to sprint, but I always like Cynthiaing here. Like, another Guzma would be pretty amazing to hit, but we'd rather hit energy cards. This hand is okay to sprint as well, I think. What else am I saving this bench space for? Not too much, and I do like threatening the Persimians. Like, the Flying Flip's are already threatening a lot. Uh, so I don't mind this sprint. It is kind of painful on our own engine, but I think it's overall okay. And because we've been proactive with the Electro Powers, I'm going to keep on with that proactiveness. So our opponent probably smooth over the second Mag Cargo this turn to evolve his Ditto. And it's likely he'll be able to get an all out this time. You can see Ultra Ball. What the Ultra Ball away? Treasure and something. Grabbing another Gramble. That sounds pretty yikes. Still not guaranteed here. They're still not guaranteed to attack us for the full damage. Again, if they take Viridian Forest, they're very likely. If they move over Forest this time, if they play the Forest, they're very likely. One thing we could be scared of is uh, Wondrous Labyrinth, by the way. If they're playing the full complement of stadiums. We'll see. We will see. Thinking about if they can get to zero. I see a Guzma. Okay. So it's a whiff from them again. Stretch is an ugly draw because I was happy to sprint this hand until then. Okay. Again, we have to value our, uh, our stretches pretty high in this deck. So I'm hesitant to sprint it away. Even though we are looking for energy next turn, we can sprint and then Stellar Wish to look for supporter if we miss off the sprint. We have gone for a good amount of Lily and Cynthia though. Just one Cynthia left in deck. Wow, still missing from him is gross. Uh, this can go here. I think now we sprint. We've got so much value out of the flying flip. And we wanna we wanna start committing the counter energies proactively because they're basically just basic energies when we uh when we start going ahead. Our opponent I'm pretty sure they weren't playing Gramble optimally there. But I do think the matchup is relatively in our favor anyway. Because we can do lots of spreading and then magical swap to knock out either like both Gramble on their board at the same time or both Mag Cargo on the board at the same time. And then from there, they have the possibility of whiffing. That's pretty much the idea. Gramble needs a very specific board state. It still needs to go double Oranguru, double Mag Cargo, double Gramble in the matchup, in my opinion. Um, so... We are always getting 120 damage flying flips and we'll always get the chance to magical swap. And that's a very good 
thing because we can, as I say, deal with double grumble and you have like a ton of respite or you deal with both my cargo and hope they can't all out. Normally the grumble route's stronger, obviously, because it's guaranteed. But it also takes more damage off your, off their field. So. Celesaur is definitely one of our more difficult matchups. Because that is a pain. And our damage output is terrible. How many energy do we have? All of our DC, two counter energy prized. We still have Gladium though. We have all of our stadiums, which is important. Simeon does no damage. We need to flip all of these till they're dead. And then we can start trying to plug away at him. So we grab this boy. We grab little Blitz boy. We attach and we Lily for some cardboard. Still worth putting into play in my opinion. Our opponent did not play a supporter card so they may be in top deck mode already. That's the hope. Let's go for it. Flying flip number one. They can obviously heal the active. But they can't heal the bench guys so easily. Not the stadium, sure. Not the worst two cards I've ever seen. Does mean that our Coco is a little tankier though. Obviously Confusion's a bit of a mess, but we are holding a switch. So I can't complain too much. It does mean that the flip does no damage to the bench though. Until we find a counter stadium. So for that reason we're gonna dig out a Jirachi. So we can have an eleven card or like a fourteen or so card dig if we can actually sprint. We'll switch into this. Fourteen or fifteen card dig, depending if we can sprint this hand or not. Maybe even further. Well, the dig didn't have to go that far. We did not have to go too deep for that one. Keep space open for potential Persimian. Band is fine to take. No, we take Lily. Take the Lily, Joe. You clown. Not really a hand to sprint. I think next turn we can go Persimian, Persimian, Lily, and then sprint. Floral heels. Let's see how brick this Celosaur is. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, it's not supporters, so I can't argue. Can't be too sour. Let's get some of these down, put this here, do this. Let's band of Runios hitting the field. A nice sprint. Just kind of wish I was basically just looking for a stretcher there because we have prized a Coco, but we do have Gladian now, so that's a thing as well, I guess. And we're threatening to take four prizes next turn. Obviously only three will matter, but still. Let's see what our opponent's top deck and prize has brought them. Is it just an attack or is it gonna be more netball? Maybe start setting up an, another Venusaur. 
instead just a grass energy. Thinning the deck, I guess. We go here. Still a wish, seems fine. <clears throat> Electro power actually makes some sense now. I think I'm happy to gladiate in this hand, so I don't need to stretch her. Like, what else would I do this turn? Ugh. We're going to need to keep getting back this gladiator. <laughs> 180. Maybe there's some fun uh, psychic lele plays we could have made this turn. Maybe. Three prizes sounds good though. There's a gladium back. There's the Lele. Energy? Yeah. Oh, four prizes. Of course. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? See Sophocles. Finally, they have a supporter. Two Sophocles. Clutching hammers are very scary. Yikes. We can definitely lose, boys. Just letting you know that we can definitely lose. Because that's four double colors in the bin. Pretty early. Pretty early indeed. Hmm, scary times. Three, six, nine, twelve. This is Three, six, nine, ten. Okay. I'm just thinking if Absol's actually right to start attaching to, but when he has hammers, it doesn't make sense. I'm currently head on prize cards, so it's weak to attach these until. Ah, uh, but his hand is still bad. I think we'll just play this just to get this out. This may as well start accumulating these. Head bolt might be our sneaky win con. Don't tell him, don't tell him. I think it's correct to try and protect this guy, but uh, what else could we sack? Can't really sack anything else. Our opponent is rolling now. This is what we're very afraid of. Gonna see Crushing Hammer fail and Acrobike into another Acrobike. He does put down two shamans, so if we can like three shamans, wow. Hmm. Solar beam. Indeed. Yikes, dude.
We can't go over this Celasaur. We have to go around him. <laughs> he is too big and too scary. I've just realized the fatal error in this plan. The fatal error is if we take one prize, he takes one prize, then I attach an energy, and then I lose the game. There's a fatal error in this plan. Therefore, change of plans. We actually don't attack this turn. I think I've actually just instantly lost myself the game by making a big mistake. What else could I have done here? What else could I have done? Ah, let's think about this. I think we need our opponent to actually miss an attack now for us to win. It's not a great feeling, I'll be honest. Oh, this is a costly error. How can I win though? He heals 60, so we're only doing 3-6. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think we actually lost anyway, but I definitely should not have done that second attachment or any of this decision making. I couldn't. Uh, two, four, six. I wouldn't have been able to do enough in time for another magical swap. Man, he bricked hard, and this is just an auto loss. <laughs> this is just such a bad matchup. Holy. There was once like if he continued to brick, there's a chance, but that's just. Not a good matchup at all. Holy. Disgusting. Yeah, we, uh, we're out. Yeah, it's, Venusaur is actually a real bad matchup. And when he benched all that stuff, I was like, huh, there's a chance. But obviously four prizes isn't six. I think we... 8, 16... No, sorry. Yeah, 8, 16, 24... Ah, ah, I misplayed. I need to look back at that. I should have Gladian for this and tried to magical swap and just kill the Venusaur at once and just leave him with the little guys. Yeah, that's what we should have done. Okay, noted. Against Venusaur, do that from now on. I'm still learning for Simeon, but I want to learn this deck because it's probably one I'm sticking to for the rest of the cups because I still don't want to play Mirrors. <laughs> and Mirrors suck. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's Coco for Simeon. I'm still learning it. I definitely should have done this. That's for sure. I'll watch this back and feel like an idiot. But we all we all know what we need to do now against Venusaur. If they bench all that stuff, swap them around. Take those sixes. Oh wait, it wasn't 300. It was 6, 12, 18, 24, 25, 26. 27 with Shrine. 26 with Shrine, because he was fully healed and just had only taken one. 6, 12, 18, 24, 25, 26 going back into his turn. Heals 60, 200. Or evergreens. No, I, I don't, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. No, we wouldn't have been able to get there. Rough. That's so rough. So we need Celesaur to bench five things for us to win. <laughs> that's nuts. Okay, yeah, that matchup is hideous. I don't think there's a way. Maybe attacking with this, question mark. Answers on a postcard. Anyway, that's Persimian Coco. I like it. Um, reasonable deck, and it has win conditions against most of the top tier decks. And being a non-GX deck can just be a pain for lots of other random stuff as well. Not Celesaur, but a lot of other stuff, so... Yeah, let me know what you think about the deck list and uh, how would you try and build Persimian? Have you tried out the Zapdos Lightning Energy build that we saw Fabian play in Can? Uh, let me hear it all down below. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnifolk, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.